Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshal. Today, I'm going to talk about something that I normally probably wouldn't talk about on the show today. I talk about stuff like this in the live chat all the time, but I want to talk about it because it seems to be very important to the gun community. I'm not sure why. But I want to talk about how the Supreme Court has apparently smacked down Biden's uh, corporate uh, vaccine mandate. And I think people have been coming to me and asking me what I think of it because other pro-gun pundits like, uh, what's his name, Shapiro, have been saying, we scored a major victory today like he was, you know, up there fighting for it or something. I don't know. I guess anything for glory. And But uh, I don't really see this as a gun-related uh, issue. It is a constitutional-related issue. And I do cover constitutional issues on this channel, First Amendment, Second Amendment, and so on. So I wanted to answer the question what people that people are asking me about how I feel about it. Because they know, like I said, that I'm kind of centrist. I'm right on some things, left on other things. Tend to be more left on social issues, more right on fiscal issues. And I'm going to say I 100% support the Supreme Court smacking this down. I don't think this should be a thing. Yes, I know there's historical precedent for the government enforcing quarantines and stuff like that. And I have no problem with that if it's justified. But... A vaccine mandate, I think, is a little outside that. And it's not just the fact that it's outside that, and I don't think the government should have a right to uh, uh, control the people to that level. It's something I think most people should choose to take. I, Everyone knows I'm a big supporter of the vaccine. I'm triple poked. Uh, I've been poked more than three. But vaccination-wise, I'm triple vaccinated. Uh I would wish everybody would get it. They can get it. Some people can't get it. If they can't get it, I feel sorry for them, especially if they're exposed. But if you can get it, get it. That's my opinion. But there's the thing. It should be a choice. And I know I'm rambling here, but I'm going to get to why I think the government should have no say in that choice. Not just because it's a free country, but because this is just a big giveaway to big business. Government has gotten to more and more to where it only protects big business. And this is just a giveaway, a free giveaway to big business, to big corporations. Because let's uh, be honest, big Wall Street companies, they want all their employees vaccinated. They want vaccine mandates. They want all their employees to be told you have to be vaccinated so you don't get sick and miss work or you don't transfer the virus to an outside vendor and we are responsible for it, blah, blah, blah. They want that. But they don't want to have to do it themselves because if they do it themselves, well, then they're the bad guy. And also, that comes with liability. If you force all your employees to get a vaccine, someone has a negative uh, reaction to it and dies, well, you might be sued. They don't want liability. They just want their way, which means they want everybody vaccinated, but they want the big bad government to do it so that they don't have to accept responsibility for doing it. And that's not the government's job. The government's job is not to enforce the will of corporations nor to reduce their liability. I feel the same way about this that I feel like uh, I feel about like universal health uh, health care and more importantly or more specifically child care. I relate this a lot to the way I think about child care. I don't think taxpayers like myself or you should be paying for other people's child care just so they can go to work. Here's the thing. Those employers need those workers. Right now, there's a huge shortage, which is one of the reasons corporations are pushing the government to go to free child care and have taxpayers pay for it. It's because they know if they want to have enough employees to run their business, well, then those people are going to have to have child care and they don't want to have to provide it. But here's the thing. If the market is working the way it's supposed to, the free market and the labor market is working the way it's supposed to, then People who have children who say, well, then I'm just not going to come work for you if you don't have child care. They should be forcing the companies to provide, ch to provide child care. And right now it's getting to that. It's getting to where companies can't get enough employees unless they have that working mother class and working father class. So they need them to have child care, but they just don't want to pay for it. The reality of the way the market should work and the way the country should work is if they want to hire these people, they should say, okay, you know, I own 10 McDonald's franchises in this county. If you work for me, you go to this childcare place and it's $10 a week for childcare. 
because we have a special deal with them. And therefore, you're taken care of. That's the employer's job. Just like I think employers should provide health care. If they want to have good employees, employees should say, not working there if you don't provide health care. And that should be the company's expense. These big multi-million dollar companies, especially. And if you're a small mom and pop company and you go, mm, I can't afford to provide everybody health care. I can't afford to po uh, provide child care. Well, you get employees by being different, by being more friendly and more understanding of their schedules and more flexible and blah, blah, blah. And you can still get employees that way. And you hire people that don't have children who need you to pay for their health care or their child care. Or you can get people who maybe you're young and don't need health care right now. But for the people who definitely need it, it should be on the employers to provide it. These big employers, do you think IBM wouldn't love to get rid of their health care plan tomorrow and would save them billions? If they, could, if they could pass that cost on to the taxpayer, they would. And they've been trying to get politicians to pass that uh, uh, cost on to taxpayers. That's the same thing with the vaccine mandate. Big businesses are using their control of government and their control of politicians, all those politicians that they've bought fair and square, they're using them to lessen their own costs, lessen their own liabilities, to cause all these things to fall in the lap of the taxpayer when they should be the responsibility of big corporations. So that's why I'm totally happy that the mandate got slapped down. I'm, like I said, firm believer, you should get the vaccine, unless you don't want to. But then I'm also a firm believer, if you don't get it, I don't feel that sorry for you. I mean, I'll feel somewhat sorry for you if you get sick and die. But knowing there was a way you could have prevented it, I'm not going to think it's the end of the world. And I also believe right now that masks and stuff like that are stupid. Masks don't stop you from getting anything. They stop you from spreading it. So if our concern is we're, ooh, we're afraid of spreading the disease to people that are unvaccinated, that's their choice. We don't stop the world because they chose that they didn't want to cooperate. If they don't want to be vaccinated, they have every right not to be. And if they get sick, they get sick. And people be like, yeah, but then they'll be clogging up hospitals. Well, then if they're clogging up hospitals, allow hospitals to start a policy where if you come in, you test positive for coronavirus and you're not vaccinated, we're going to give you an O2 monitor, some oxygen and send you home and put a quarantine sign on your door. Fine with that too. So I don't believe a hospital should be forced to care for people who chose not to be uh, vaccinated. Not the way I see private industry is working. If we want to have a public health care system, that's one thing. Private health care system, well, then it has the rights of a, of a private business. And if you don't like that, well, then reconsider your positions on private businesses and public businesses, as far as I'm concerned. But like I said, I'm fine with it being slapped down. In fact, I support it being slapped down. This is just, like I said, another big giveaway from the government to big corporations. And what they're giving them is basically our money. All right, everybody, one more thing before I get out of here. G-Webs has already gotten back the very first prototypes of the patches. Uh, as you can see here, he had a rough draft drawn up. Now, there's a few changes I think are going to be made to this. I personally think the outline should be black. I don't know about anybody else, but I think that white, that white background is too much white. There should be the outline, that outer edge should be black. Also, I think that needs to be spaced out a little more away from the, the image in the middle. The text needs to be spaced away from it. And they need to get rid of the Yankee Marshall on there or lower it down or something or shrink it or something because it's taking up too much room. It's pushing the text too high. It's making everything too cramped. I think things need to be spread out a little more. Maybe get rid of the Yankee Marshall, put a black outline around it. But the very fact that it's to this stage already, that shows you you're, you're lucky G-Webs is handling this and not me. Uh, so if you think, uh, what changes you think should be made to it, feel free to pipe up in the comment section of this video. Maybe G webs is going to read it. I bet he will. Uh, he came to the chat last night and listened to people's, uh, opinions. So go ahead and let me know in the comment section, if you, what, ch uh, changes you think need to be made to it. Uh, but other than that, if you want one, go order one. You just got to go over to gearwebsites.com. Like I said, this is going to be a very limited order. If we sell 110, we're making 110. If we sell 214, we're making 214. Well, I know we probably make 250. I think they got to be an even. And I want a few. I don't know if I've told you Wibs yet, but I want like five. I think I should get five for designing it and promoting it. I should get five patches. I don't think that's too much to ask. Uh, because my son will take one. That leaves me four. Uh, so those are the patches. Like I said, moving along very speedily. If this was me, we'd be months before this ever even got to this stage. G-Webs is going to have them done and made and out to you by February, end of February. 
Uh, but go over, order one. Like I said, it's gonna be very limited. And it's not just you're ordering a patch, you're actually supporting 2A activism. You're supporting G-Webs' trips to uh, SHOT Show, to other organizations that he travels to during the year. Uh, G-Webs is a true 2A activist. He's not a 2A profiteer like most of the bigger channels. He's never sold out. He doesn't want to be famous. He doesn't even show his face. He's actually one of the true freedom fighters out there on the road doing the work. So please go over buy a patch to support his work. And like I said, you will get a very limited edition patch because like I said, we're only going to make as many as we sell. So if you haven't got one yet, go over and get one, get two, get three, get 10. Because like I said, it's for a very good cause. All right, everybody, with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and sign off today. I want to say thank you to everyone who showed up. I hope you come back again on Monday. Until then, I want to remind everyone out there to always carry and stay safe. And that doesn't always mean using your gun. Sometimes it means knowing when not to use your gun and where to avoid places where you might have to use your gun. Stay safe until I see you again.